This Fiddly application we have built is useless if it's going to sit on our machine. So we should upload or deploy this somewhere where other people can use. So in this lecture, I'm going to show you how to deploy this application to a very popular cloud platform called Heroku. Heroku is not the only platform for deploying Django applications. You can also use Google Cloud Platform, Amazon Web Services or AWS, Microsoft Azure and so on. The steps that I'm going to show you to deploy this application, some of them are specific to Heroku. So if you want to deploy this application to a different cloud platform, some of these steps are going to be different. So the first thing I want you to do is to open up your browser and head over to heroku.com. Now go ahead and create a new account. It's going to take only a few seconds and you don't need to provide a credit card to sign up. So you can try it first. And if you like it, you can upgrade to get additional capacity. The next thing I want you to do is to install Heroku CLI. So search for Heroku CLI. CLI stands for Command Line Interface. And it's basically a program that we run on the command line, on the terminal. And with this program, we're going to perform some administrative tasks, such as logging into our account, setting some configuration, looking at the logs, and so on. So on this page, you should be able to find Heroku CLI for your operating system. So you can see we have various implementations for Mac, Windows, Linux, and so on. And the third thing I want you to install is Git, which is the most popular version control system. So with that, we can version our code. So we're going to check our code into a repository. And every time we make changes to our code, we're going to commit that code to our repository. And with this, we can look at the history of changes to our code. We can see who has made what changes when. It's really, really powerful. Now, the explanation of Git is beyond the scope of this tutorial. That really requires its own tutorial or course. But in this tutorial, we're going to learn the basics. So to download Git, head over to git-scm.com. Here, go to Downloads and download Git Installer for your operating system. So pause the video now. Do these three steps. When you're done, come back, continue watching. All right, first, let's make sure that you have installed all the prerequisites properly. So here on the terminal, let's run git dash dash version. So I have installed git version 2.19 and also Heroku dash dash version. Currently, I have Heroku version 6.13, but there is an update available. I'm not going to worry about that in this tutorial. So let's go ahead and prepare this application for deployment. Now, first, we need to install a package called Unicorn, which is a popular web server for Python applications. Because the web server that we have used so far is purely a simple, lightweight development server, we're not going to use that in a production environment. In case you're not familiar with the term production environment, that is basically the environment where our customers access our application. In this case, it's going to be our application in Heroku. We can also have a testing environment where we give our application to a limited number of users for testing. So back to the business. Let's install Gunicorn. So pip env install Gunicorn. Make sure to spell it properly. All right, next, in the root of our project, we need to add a new file. So here in the root, let's add a new file, proc file. Make sure to spell this properly. So P is capital, and this is really important. So proc, which is short for process file. This is a special file that Heroku looks at to start our application. In this file, we should write web colon gunicorn widly dot wsgi. What is going on here? Well, with this, we're telling Heroku that we need a web process that is a kind of process used for web applications. And to start that process, we need to load gunicorn, that is our web server. And here's the name of the module that gunicorn should use to start our application. In this case, that is vidly.wsgi. So here's our vidly folder. That is our vidly package. In this package, we have this module, wsgi, which is short for Web Server Gateway Interface. So save the changes. Now, the next step is to prepare the static files for deployment. Static files are like CSS files, images, JavaScript files, and so on. Now, in this application, we don't currently have any static files. But this admin interface that we have used so far has a number of static files that give this application this look and feel. 
So we need to bring those static files into our current project and deploy them to Heroku. So back in VS Code, first we need to go to Vidly and open up the settings module. Now let's scroll to the bottom. Here we have a variable static URL. Next to that, I'm going to define another variable, static underline root. Now we could put this variable anywhere in this module. It doesn't have to be right after static URL, but to keep our code clean and well organized, I decided to put that here. Now we should set this variable to the path to the folder that contains our static files. Now currently we don't have that folder here. So let's add that to the root of our project. So here, a new folder, static. Now we want to get the complete path to this folder and put it here. We don't want to hard code that like C drive, backslash, whatever, because this can change on different machines where we deploy our application. So earlier we set the path to the templates folder. Let's scroll up. So here it is. Look at this templates variable. Here we set the path to the templates folder using this expression. So using the join method of the path class in OS module, we're joining the base directory, which is the path to this project with the templates folder. So I'm going to copy this and then back here, paste it here and then change templates to static. All right, now let's save the changes. Open up the terminal window, run Python, manage.py, collect static. This command will look at all the installed apps. It will get all their static files and copy them into our static folder. Let me show you. So let's go ahead. As you can see, 119 static files were copied to our static folder. Let's have a quick look here. So here's our static folder. Let me close that and zoom in. So here we have this admin folder and inside this folder, we have all the static files for the admin app. So as you can see, we have quite a few number of CSS files, as well as fonts, images, and JavaScript files. Now in our movies app, we could also have a bunch of CSS files, images, JavaScript files. And then when we run collect static, they will all end up inside the static folder. Okay. Now, to serve these static files in Heroku, we should also install a package called white noise. This step is specific to Heroku. So if you want to use a different cloud platform, you may not necessarily have to do this. So one more time, open up the terminal and run pip env install white noise. Now here on pypi.org, let's search for white noise. Here's the package. So this package is used for serving static files. Let's go here and find their documentation. Now let's go to using white noise with Django. On this page, you can see the steps that you need to follow to use this package. So first it's telling us to set the static root variable, which we already did. Now this documentation is suggesting to use the folder static files. We call it static. It doesn't really matter. Now the second step is to enable white noise by adding it in the list of middleware. So in our settings file, we have this variable middleware, which is set to a list of middleware objects. These middleware objects are used as part of processing the HTTP requests that we receive in our web server. So here we need to install this middleware, white noise, that middleware, that white noise middleware. With this middleware, we'll be able to serve static files. So when there is a request for a static file, like a CSS file or an image, this middleware will kick in and do all the hard work. So Basically, we need to copy this line and put it right below security middleware. So back to the settings module, here's our middleware variable. The first middleware is for security. Right after that, we need to add the white noise middleware. So copy, also add a comma at the end, save the changes, done. So with these changes, we have prepared our application for deployment. In the next lecture, I will show you how to deploy this application to Heroku.